Fellas, there are so many little things in this game that I forget about all the time. But today, I want to talk about 10 basic tips and tricks that are essential for playing old school RuneScape. First, I want to talk about F keys. F keys are interesting. You can play the entire game without ever using them. But let me show you like a small example. Don't mind my cursed inventory setup, but it, trust me, it's just for the example. So with F keys, I think there's four important ones. I have my inventory on F1, right? I can always get back to this screen if I need to drink a potion, drink a brew, or switch weapons, switch gear, anything like that. On F2, I have my prayer book. This is important for being able to change prayer. There's a lot of activities that require you to flick between two different prayers or even three different prayers. Sometimes you'll need to turn on piety, rigor, augury, whatever. You'll always be using your prayer book, so I think it's important to have on your F keys. On F3, I have my spell book. This has become super important for using freezes or blood barrage. It also has other uses for using like crumble undead, a teleport. There's a lot of uses for the spell book, obviously. And on F4, I have my combat option. This one might be a bit more niche, but it definitely has its uses. So I just wanted to like show you why it's important, right? Like say you're doing a boss, you really need to eat something and then you need to change your prayers because a different attack is coming. So if you were to eat something, so we click our brew, then we have to click up here, then click a prayer, right? Or we can just click the brew and then click the prayer immediately. It's the difference of one tick, but sometimes one tick can save you that extra damage you're about to take. Spellbook is the exact same. Say you need to restore your prayer, so you drink a little prayer, and then boom, you can already cast Blood Brush. It's just like a time-saving thing, because like the difference between having to click a potion, click up here, and then click on a spell, it just takes way too long. Of course, there are people who can do this very quickly, but you'll see that like the level of your gameplay will go up as you implement something like F keys into it. If you're big into PvP, there's an interesting thing you can do where you can right-click an item, and then you can switch to your combat options tab so now you can click this and then you're immediately here on your special attack that's the difference of clicking a weapon in your inventory on the combat options and then back to special attack in pvp where everything moves so fast this is so crucial it's also the difference of if you don't use a special attack bar clicking on your weapon and then going all the way up to your special attack bar again i'll reiterate everything is completely possible by just clicking there are people who just click but if you're someone who wants to kind of like push the level of the gameplay up, you really need to start using F keys. Do you remember these guys? These guys are so important to like early game players and everything. You can get free arrows to get some early levels. You can get some free runes to get some early levels. But did you know there are toggle options with these two instructors? So with the range tutor, you can actually make it so that when you pick up ammo, it goes directly into either your blowpipe or into your quiver slot. So if I have the blowpipe equipped, and it has amethyst darts in it. When I pick up this amethyst dart, it will not go into my inventory. It will go directly into the blowpipe. This is really good for conserving inventory space, as well as saving you the time of having to manually re-add them in every single time. The same thing works for arrows. So you can see that I have uh, 10 dragon arrows equipped. If I drop this dragon arrow and pick it up, it goes directly into my quiver. I no longer have to pick it up into my inventory and then spam click it until it's re-equipped. You can also do the exact same thing with the Mage Tutor, but this one works by adding them directly into your rune pouch if you're already carrying them. So this doesn't actually work if you're picking up more runes than you can fit in the pouch. So right now I have 15,000 fire runes in there. I have no wrath runes. So if we pick up the wrath runes, they go directly into my inventory. But if I pick up these 500 fire runes, they'll now go directly into the pouch. This one is more niche, but I do think it also works for rune crafting, which is predominantly what it's used for. And just to confirm this works, I have 15,500. When I craft these fire runes, they go directly into the rune pouch, and I now have 15,578. This is good for Guardians of the Rift, just because you can kind of store the important runes you want while banking the ones you technically don't need. Uh, it does take up an inventory space, but I think they just added this into the game to match the range one, which does have way more usefulness in the actual game itself. And once you've talked to the two tutors in Lumbridge, you can now access the option to turn this on or off from anywhere in the game, just in the settings tab. The magic one is up to you if you want to do it, but I really do recommend you talk to the range tutor and turn the other one on if you haven't already. The next thing I want to talk about is bank tabs. Bank tabs will be different for everybody. I think there are a few basic ones that everybody should have, but we do have the option for nine. 
so the rest of them are kind of up to you. In my opinion, for bank tabs, they're important to making things easier for you to access. I talked to someone the other day who said he doesn't use bank tabs. He just has the main bag tab and all his shit just there. How do you find anything? How do you keep that organized? You'd have to manually search for every item you're pulling out. Okay, but my recommendation for bank tabs. In your main tab, I keep like my money, my teleports, and then stuff like for dailies and whatever. I also keep like a few other small things. I have like purple sweets from Clues. I have the Menophyte kit from TOA since I don't have the shield yet. Uh, my active tokens is part of daily stuff, and then my clues are here when I want to pull them out. I think the most important tabs are having something for your gear, so all your combat gear. You just put everything in here and then you know it's there. I have a tab for potions and food. I ha also have a very bad habit of just putting useless stuff at the bottom of all these. But like, if we like look up, I have my potions, my food, my runes. It's all in one place. I know exactly where it is. If I need a specific rune, I go to my tab. It's very easy. You just have to create your own system that works for you. I have a loot tab. Uh, right now I'm doing Guardians of the Rift and Calphite Queen. So I have loot from Guardians of the Rift and Calphite Queen at the bottom. And then above it, I just have like rune items because they're common from everything dragon items, herb seeds, uh, totems, and then bird's nests from miscellanea and birdhouses. Uh, loot tab is nice because you can then sell like large stacks of items at once. You don't have to run to the GE after every slayer task or after every like boss trip. Uh, but I know a lot of people don't like doing this. Uh, it's This one is more personal preference. I don't really recommend you get a loot tab unless it's something you want. But the next one I definitely do recommend, the skilling tab. In this tab, just put all your skilling equipment, your skilling outfits, skilling gear, skilling like tools, any items you need for skilling, like fishing bait, knives, any like small items you would need for skilling in any sense go in this tab. This has been very helpful for me because if I wanna switch activities, I just deposit my whole inventory, deposit my worn equipment. I go to my tab, put on my new outfit, pick up my tools and I'm on to the next thing. I think most people should have a farming tab. Farming tab has been very useful. Uh, I'm one of those people who still does a farm run every morning. It just becomes part of your day, right? People love or hate farming. If you do a farm run every day, you know how important having a farm tab is. But I think those are kind of all the main tabs. I have a collection log tab, which is just like untradeables and like items that are like hard to get. Uh, I have what I would call an Iron Man tab. Like, I don't think people should do this. I just have like basic resources that can be used for a variety of stuff. Uh, I have what you would consider like an active tab. This one is kind of special to me, I guess. Uh, this is mainly because I started doing AFK 9 to 5. So I made a tab where I could just put in the item that I'm getting that day or like whatever's coming in for that day or whatever's going to be in the video that I'm working on. And then I just have a junk tab. Junk tab is kind of important, I think, for most people. Uh, this is just kind of like stuff that doesn't really see any use or like very minimal use or has no specific intended purpose like something i don't use constantly but it's just there so if i get like stuff that i don't know where to put it it goes into this tab i think i also have fallow clue items in here uh like painted dark bows like i just have weird stuff in this tab but it's just because it keeps it clean uh and i think what ties this all together is the rune light plugin bank tags bank tags is really nice they end up on the left side of your bank and you can basically sort by activity right so now you have a gear tab which holds all your gear but now you have a bank tag on the left which holds just the gear for something like hydra or it holds just the gear for a skilling activity like gardens of the rift mine is missing the rune crafting outfit because i recently <laughs> recolored it but yeah this, this is just bank organizational stuff it's it's very complex, there's a lot to it. The most important thing at the end of the day is that when you use your bank, you personally know how to go through it. It doesn't matter if nobody else can figure it out, as long as you can, that's all that matters. The next thing I really just wanna to quickly touch on is shift clicking. Shift clicking is kind of important. It's again, one of those things that you do if you wanna like really up the level of your gameplay. Of course, the entire game is accessible to everyone by letting you kind of do everything with right clicking, left clicking, whatever. But shift clicking adds kind of like that next level of like speed and accuracy to clicks, I guess. For a long time, shift clicking was the best way to do skilling. So if you were doing something like barbarian fishing, you would have these fish and then you would shift click and be able to drop them. Nowadays, menu entry swapper is kind of the thing most people use. So again, by holding shift, if you click, you can set the left click option to drop. This lets you do activities with just left clicking and you don't have to constantly be holding down shift 
on your keyboard. Another thing that has become very popular in the like last couple of years is that you can now use shift click to basically ignore enemies. So if you're doing a boss that has a step under method like Calphite Queen, Cerberus, uh, uh, if you're red Xing on like Baba and TOA, if you're trying to not left click one of the shadows in Aka Room, there's like a variety of examples. I don't know why I'm trying to run through them. If you hold shift, you can now click through enemies. So instead of having the attack option be visible, if you hold shift, it lets you click through them. This makes step under so much easier. You no longer have to right click the boss, walk under, right click the boss, walk under. You can attack the boss, hold shift and walk under. It is game changing for a lot of activities. It is so small, but it is so important. The next thing I wanna talk about is equipment stats. Equipment stats are very important and I think a lot of people overlook these. I'm not gonna go crazy in depth on equipment stats in this video, this is more of a general video. As like a concept for my channel, I don't really make guides. I just kind of show you how I do stuff because I think that better relates to you rather than showing you ideal ways to do stuff in game. I will, however, link a video in the description about equipment stats and how like gear works in this game. It's surprisingly detailed and you'll definitely want to learn about it. So if you're at the point of your account where you're really looking into gear, I definitely recommend you watch the video in the description. But at its like core, there are four main stats for gear. There's accuracy bonuses. This is stuff like your stab slash crush magic and range. You'll see it in like the top box when you open your character stats. Basically the higher number this is, the higher like a chance you have at landing a specific attack type. So if you have very high range accuracy, you have a higher chance to hit when you're using range. Strength bonuses are almost the exact opposite. They exist for all three types of combat, but the higher this number is, the higher your max hit is. This pops up in like the third box. You'll see when we look at our like equipment stats, it's not attack, not defense, but it's typically in other bonuses. In old school, we focus on this number quite a bit because it is better to be able to hit a 50 than a zero, than a 50, than it is to hit a five, a five, a five. Then we have defense bonuses. Defense is pretty straightforward in this game. It just increases your chance to block a specific attack type. The way damage rolls is that you would think that the higher your defense is, the less damage you take, but this works the same way that accuracy does, where it doesn't soften a hit, it just increases the chance you get hit for a zero. And the more often we get hit for a zero, the less damage we take, which is the inverse of strength. I'm trying very hard not to make this too complicated. Trust me, there's a video in the description. If you wanna know more, please watch it. And the last one we really need to talk about is prayer bonus. Prayer bonus is very easy. The higher your prayer bonus, the slower your prayer points drain. It's that easy. This is why when people do Slayer, you'll see them in a prayer setup because they can deflect all damage with prayer and they can slow the drain of which their prayer points go down with prayer gear. Equipment stats are very complex and there's a lot of things that really dramatically shift them. So again, video in the description if you really wanna know more. And speaking of the importance of stuff, we need to talk about the importance of the wiki. Even for people like myself who have played this game for 10, 15 years, who have hundreds of millions of XP, have maxed every stat in the game, have killed every boss in the game at least a couple times, there is still a ton of stuff we don't know. So I can't even imagine going back to the start, especially at this point in the game. There are so many like small items and small niche uses for shit that the wiki has become like mandatory for playing this game. The only thing I really want to talk about in this section is that if you don't know something, if you click on this little wiki button on your client, if you right click it, you have the option to look up and search. The look up option will let you click on an item in game and it will actually open that wiki page. If you click the search option, it will actually let you search for anything. So if you're curious about how rare Tangle Root is, you could look up Tangle Root and it'll bring you directly to the wiki page for Tangle Root. You can do this for almost everything in the game. There's probably one small niche item that doesn't exist on the wiki, but odds are 99.99999% of items are on the wiki. Anything you need to know can be found this way. There is just so much information that you kind of need to use the wiki to be effective in playing this game. And speaking of using the wiki, one thing you will definitely want to use the wiki on is understanding all the unique mechanics in the wilderness. The wilderness is like its own game within the game. When you enter the wilderness, Hey, it's me, I'm back. I recorded this video about a month ago, but I just never put it together. In this section, I talked about wilderness mechanics for over 35 minutes. And honestly, you don't need that much information. So I'm going to very quickly summarize what I talked about. The wilderness has levels to it. 
When you enter, you're at level 1, and when you're at the northernmost point, you're at level 56. These levels are just the combat gap of which people can attack you. If your combat level is 90 and you're at level 20 in the wilderness, someone who is 20 levels above or below can attack you. I spoke about the death mechanics as well. If you get killed in the wilderness by another player, you'll keep 3 items. If you use the protect from item prayer, you'll keep 4. If you are sculled in the wilderness, and you'll get sculled in the wilderness if you attack a player who has not attacked you first, you will lose all of your items on death. The protect item prayer does work, but it will only let you keep one item. Also, when you go into the wilderness, you need to remember that there are teleport restrictions. You cannot just freely leave. All teleports will work at level 20 wilderness or below, but there are a few that work up to level 30. This is the Amulet of Glory, the Combat Bracelet, Skills Necklace, Ring of Wealth, all Dragonstone jewelry. Surprisingly, the Pharaoh Scepter works at 30 wilderness, the Grand Seed Pod does, the Slayer Ring also works, and the Ring of Life effect either from the ring itself, the Defense Skill Cape, or the Max Cape work. Those do require you to be below 10% HP and get hit, so don't plan on using one of those as an escape. In the wilderness, if you drop an item, regardless of what it is, it will show up immediately. This is for every item in the game that is not cooked food or potions. So don't drop anything out there that you don't expect to lose. There are a few items that have unique properties that get changed when you enter the wilderness. The Din's Bulwark and the set of Justitia do not work, but they still keep their defensive stats. Oddly enough, the effect is removed from these two, but the Elijah Spirit Shield does work. Anglerfish will no longer overheal you when you eat them, but this is only if you're in combat with another player or an NPC. The Blowpipe's base speed is changed from 3 to 4, but this only affects you when you're fighting another player. So if you're doing a Slayer task out there, it's still completely normal. Any staff that has a built-in spell cannot be used against another player, except Theramon Scepter and the Accursed Scepter. I don't know why this is exactly, but it, it appears to be the case. So if you bring your trident or you bring a sang out there, you cannot use it on another player, but you can use it on enemies like NPCs or any monsters. If you have a serpentine helm in the wilderness, it will not venom other players, but it will poison them instead. And if you're bringing Barrow's items, if another player kills you, they'll be protected based on their broken value, not their fully repaired value. And I spoke about a lot of other things, but I think the only other thing you really need to know is that if you use spellbook filtering, this does not work in the wilderness. Your spells will be the normal size they are before filtering. But for whatever reason, if you're on mobile, you can still filter your spells. And if you're using a staff that has an autocast option, if for whatever reason you take that staff off and put it back on, the staff will not remember your autocast settings and you'll have to set it up again. The wilderness is very interesting, don't be scared to go out there, but just remember there is always risk. So explore it at your own pace and just know there's a good chance you'll probably die. Okay, and I feel like I've, I've talked a lot this video, so let's kind of just like wrap things up really quick here. If you didn't already know, we were supposed to get skilling prayers with Desert Treasure 2. This kind of got lost in translation and we'll no longer be getting any new prayers with this quest. We do, however, have one prayer that could be considered a skilling prayer, and that's Preserve. Preserve can be learned by buying a Tattered Prayer Scroll for 50k or getting it as a drop from Chambers of Zarek. This is not a raid unique, it's more of a common drop, so it's really not that bad to get even if you're an Iron Man. This prayer is really good for skilling because it increases the duration of your skill boosts. So for example, if you eat a summer pie and get the agility bonus from it, if you turn on preserve, the boost from this pie will last 50% longer, letting you run already rooftop longer before you need to eat another pie. This also works for stuff like dragon tools, like the axe, the pickaxe, or the harpoon. In combination with the light bearer, you can really extend how long you get this boost for. Preserve is really good, and I recommend you pick it up if you get the chance. When you do Slayer, a lot of the time you'll be using an overhead prayer. If you have the option to do Slayer in the catacombs, it's really recommended because every time you bury a bone, you'll get a prayer restoral effect. This will basically extend your trips and let you use less prayer potions. You'll also have the chance to get totem pieces, and this will let you fight Scotizo. Of course, if you're using Konar, there's a very high chance you won't always get a task in the catacombs, but if you're using Neve, Steve, or Duradel, if you can do a task in the catacombs, it's really recommended, unless for whatever reason you really want to can it. And the last thing we really need to talk about is the tick system. So I won't really go super in depth on this. I will link a video in the description that really helps you understand game ticks, but movement, all combat and everything revolves around the tick system. A tick is 0.6 seconds. This is the rate at which the game takes and reads inputs. So if you've ever clicked on a tile and wondered why there's like that slight delay before your character moves, 
That is the tick system at work. There are a lot of unique skilling methods that revolve around ticks. You can basically force the game to work in cycles of ticks rather than it's like base tick reading system. So something like cutting a tick log can be shrunk down to two ticks instead of the four tick cycle that it normally is. By doing stuff like this, you can increase your XP, but the importance of understanding ticks goes beyond increasing your XP rates. A lot of high level PVM kind of makes you understand how ticks work, but you really only need a basic understanding to really enjoy the game. Again, I'm not an expert in ticks, so I've linked a video in the description if you want to learn more about it. But just understand that that's where that weird delay comes from when you're doing activities and stuff like that. By clicking on ticks in cycle, your gameplay becomes way more fluid, if that's the right word to use. But yeah, those are my 10 important tips and tricks that are essential for all players to know. I'm going to assume most of you already knew most of this, but hopefully you found something new out that you didn't know before. If you enjoyed the video, please consider liking and subscribing. I've talked for a very long time and I'm now lightheaded. A special thank you to the first big fella, Dan's McGee. There's no way I said that right. But as a big fella, you get to pick a video topic. So if you have something you want to see, let me know in the comments. And as always, a big shout out to my YouTube members, Italk, Jujo, and Snacks. But other than that, I've really got nothing left to say, especially in this video. So I'll see you in the next one.